What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Unhinged Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hensley, joined today by the man, Brandon Kramer. How we doing, Brandon? Doing well. How about you? Can't complain, uh, as usual. Listen, before we do talk about Nick Nelson today and kind of the impact he can have on the 2021 Yankees, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. We're going live before and after every single Yankees game this season, uh, as well as our daily pre-recorded episodes, so stay tuned for all that. Uh, we got content coming out left and right. You guys know that. But uh, I do want to focus on Nick Nelson today and kind of the impact that he can have in the Yankees 2021 bullpen. Brendan, I know you're like the biggest Nick Nelson fan in the world, so I'll let you start things off about him. Well, like, why do you love him so much? Well, if you look at his stuff that he has, he's got some really good stuff. Um, Great fastball, great curve, and a developing change. Those are three pitches that can really make you a successful reliever. Um, He was a starter in the minors, but... Moving him to the bullpen was probably the best thing they could have had him. And you just saw from kind of little pieces of it last year that he has the potential to be great. But his fastball, hitters were always late. It kind of had like a Chad Green type where it had a good spin rate, so it kind of looked like it was rising. Sure. The curveball was amazing. And I believe it was the game against the Phillies in summer camp that he just blew them away. And then the game against the Red Sox, I think it was one of our first games in 2020, that I knew like, hey, this kid, if he puts it all together – He's going to be a great. I mean, we even saw it yesterday. Yes, the stupid rule, he would have been fine. It's not an earned run, but then he struck out the next three hitters he faced. Yeah. So and, and that, that's kind yeah. of the key with Nick Nelson. I mean, the way you kind of mentioned like Chad Green, um, going into the season, that's kind of the breakout season that I think we're going to see from him, like a Chad Green type year where he kind of solidifies himself as a, a back end member of the Yankees uh, bullpen. Uh, also, because he has that Chad Green effect where he can go multiple innings if the Yankees need him to, um, just because he has the stuff and control to kind of do so. Um, but I think the key with Nick Nelson is, honestly, I don't want to say, like, staying healthy, but I want to say just, like, consistency, because we didn't see consistency out of him in 2020. But, I mean, obviously, just like every member of the Yankees bullpen, just stay healthy. But, I mean, I think that the consistency is consistency is going to come like as he gets more acquired to like major league uh, competition. And the only way to get that is by getting major league innings underneath his belt. So I think that it's a perfect situation for him to be in the big leagues um, in 2021, even though a lot of people thought that he had some stuff to still work on in AAA. But I think kind of, I don't want to say the injuries to Wilson and Britain are beneficial towards uh, Nick Nelson, but I think they are in the capacity of he's going to be able to have like these high leverage situations where he's going to get to pitch. And I mean, we saw it in the 10th inning of opening day against the blue Jays. That's like a pretty high leverage situation, especially like the runner on second base rule. And do keep in mind that if the runner on second base rule wasn't a thing, he would have given up no earned runs because that would have been a leadoff double. And then he had three strikeouts after that. So that's why there's no earned run under his, underneath his belt. But like I said, I mean, I think just like you said, Nick Nelson has the stuff to be like a solidified member of the Yankees bullpen this season and make a huge impact. Yeah, I mean, and even Judge said it. Judge misplayed that ball. He could have played that ball yeah. much better. Um, and Judge admitted it. It looked kind of weird. It looks like a ball that I think nine times out of ten, ten Judge is going to make that that play. Not putting any blame on Judge. Nelson missed his spot. It happens. But if there wasn't a runner on second, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you said like what you said is true. He's going to get more high leverage spots, and he had he needed to go into this season have an amazing spring. He he somehow he did. did better I think than he only I gave up one earned run. He gave right? up a single run in ten innings, which is insane. Yeah, um, he has great stuff, and he's like the kind of pitcher that, as you said, will go multiple innings. I truly believe if we tied the game, he would have been back out for the for the eleventh. Um, Probably no doubt, no doubt in my mind. I think the game against the Red Sox, he went three innings. Um, because I believe he got the save. Because that's still that is still a weird rule. The uh, if you get three innings to end the game, no matter the score, you get a save. But anyway, um, yeah. I mean, listen. I, my only thing about Nick Nelson is looking at the the way the Yankees bullpen is currently shaped up right now. Where with the injuries to Wilson and Britain, where would you rank him right now? So yeah. is like the tier of like who I trust. Sure. Yeah. So uh, Chapman's coming back. Uh, he's back. Uh, for he's today's back on game. Sunday. Oh, Sunday, so not Saturday. Sunday. Um, yeah. So is this so just right now with Britton and Wilson not in? Um, yeah. I would go Chapman, then Green, then O'Day. Um, and then Nelson? Honestly, then Nelson. I mean, yeah, Loisco looked really good. They finally got him to throw his sinker all the time for his fastball, and everyone grounded out. That's the thing with Loisco. With Nelson, 
as you said, consistency controls also a big thing. He sure. has a tendency to lose control of his stuff. But the importance of that developing changeup is what's going to really separate him from like a Dellen Batanzas type guy to maybe even better because with Batanzas, he would get ahead with the fastball and throw a fastball by you. But with Batanzas, you saw that because of that, when his velocity naturally went down, could also have been because of the, the ankle injury, he not as dominant as he – well, honestly, he will never be that dominant again. With Nelson, with that changeup, the importance of that is – he doesn't even have to really make it a good pitch at times. If you're going from 99, I think his changeup's like 85. Yeah. You could even hang it and you'll have a guy out in front because th those two other put away pitches, he can put, he has three put away pitches with his fastball as well. But let's say he gets a uh, 2 on a guy with two fastballs. He then could go a changeup anywhere to get the guy out in front or uh, throw the hammer down. So yeah. he's got the great stuff. He has like, a solid that, repertoire. He really does. But it's the type like, Pitchers nowadays need really four pitches, four or five pitches. He's got three, but that's a really good, capable bullpen arm. And the multiple innings thing is what the Yankees need. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say at the end of this year, Nick Nelson's going to be one of the – he's going to be – when we think of our bullpen, he's going to be one of the big guys. That would be huge for the Yankees, um, just in the sense of having, like, another back-end guy like that who's also young and under team control for a while. Um, but going into this season, there was kind of two young guys – where I was keeping an eye on to see whether or not they would kind of be able to solidify themselves as being one of those guys. And it came down in my eyes to Loisga and Nelson, right? And to be quite honest with you, Brandon, I mean, I know Loisga had a pretty good spring as well. Um, but I think Nelson has so much more potential than Loisga moving forward. And that's like not even a knock on Loisga, but I feel like the Yankees misutilize him sometimes. I know we mentioned like uh, Nelson has the length. Loisga also has the length. But I feel like he's so much better off as like a one inning guy um, compared to Nelson. I think he might be better as a multiple inning guy, but that's why I think the Yankees should kind of like re-examine the way their bullpen set up right now and keep Loazga as that one inning guy. And if you do want a reliever to go multiple innings, you go that route with Nelson instead of Loazga. I mean, we saw that uh, on opening day. Loazga came, Loazga actually was the first guy out of the pen. I was expecting, or no, uh, it was after Chad Green. I was yeah. expecting it to be Nelson. Um, but it ended up being Loisga, and Loisga actually pitched really well. Um, but I actually just looked it up. Nick Nelson, this was his first year of team control. So he, we have him under control for five more years. No, oh, yeah. It's um, ridiculous. So now that's the thing. As you said, Loisga and Nelson are going to be those two big guys. Loisga, it's always the thing. Yeah, he was a starter. Didn't walk many people. But his stuff is that electric that using him as like a potential one to one inning guy will be great. I mean, yeah, let's say you bring him in for like, let's say the seventh inning and the Yankees go down one, two, three on three pitches. And then they only take like two minutes. Then you're like, yeah. okay, bring him in for another inning. But like Nick Nelson is the type of guy where you honestly would, wouldn't be surprised if they use him for multiple innings. Yeah. Why, I wouldn't like, be surprised at all. Why is the stuff is just the tendency of him to make one mistake and it be punished. And we've seen it. Why in the second inning reminds me of Batanzas in the second inning in 2018. Sure. sure. Like, you know, don't bring him out in the second inning. It's a fair so, argument. I think we'll see Loisic out of the pen first in some spots and Nelson as a guy to like hold that lead as well. And it's going to just, if we can get, and I, we need, everyone's like, oh, Yankees should go like sign bullpen arms. They got so much bullpen depth. Like, yeah, all bullpen guys are failed starters, but that's because their stuff is so electric that it falls off after a while. If you can isolate that in one or two innings, you're fine. Andrew Miller, Dellen Batanzas, Araldis Chapman, all failed starters. Everyone's a failed starter. Yeah. Um, but the Yankees have really good depth for that bullpen. I don't know how many of them are going to turn to starters, but I think with Nelson and Loisga, they will both be bullpen arms, and Nick Nelson is going to make a huge impact for the Yankees this year. It's going to be fun. I mean, Brandon, you definitely got me on, like, the Nick Nelson bandwagon within the past few months. So, listen, I'm looking forward to see where he goes uh, this year. I definitely think the, the sky's the limit for him. Um, so I'm excited to see how the season plays out for Nick Nelson. Hopefully he does very well. Uh, but that is going to wrap things up for us today. Everyone, be sure, like I said earlier, like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you do know when we go live before and after every single Yankees game this season. Um, you guys know the drill. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Peace.